Hello, and welcome to Series 1, Episode 2 of High Spirits with Edwin Corney. Today, I want to talk to you about clairvoyance. Clairvoyance literally means clear seeing. It's the ability to see those things that other people can't see. My clairvoyant ability first came online when I was five years old and I had that ability right up until the age of 12 when I realized that other people couldn't see the things that I could see and I imagined that it must just be my imagination and so I consciously closed the ability down and then when I was 16 years old realizing what it was I sat to develop that ability and it took me about a year to get it fully back online and then from that point onwards, I sat to develop it proper so that I could use it at will and direct it and focus it in the areas that I wanted to use it in. Clairvoyance then is seeing the future. It's seeing the past. It's seeing the energy system, the aura and chakras and meridians. It's seeing spirit, whether that is our guides or guardian angel or the dearly departed or ascended masters it is being able to see into the present situation with greater clarity and understanding and discerning things that are hidden from most other people i've always felt that a lot of people have clairvoyant ability but don't really recognize it as such because people tend to think that clairvoyance is being overwhelmed with a cinematic vision that sweeps away your physical sight um, and is surround a sound and technicolor and like being in the cinema when often it's far vaguer than that far less dramatic than that and for a lot of clairvoyance for the majority of clairvoyance, I think, takes place inside the head rather than externally in the physical world around us. So I think there are a lot of people who think that they are just imaginative or have very vivid daydreams or very vivid meditations who are actually clairvoyant. And I think, unfortunately, there are some people who believe themselves to be clairvoyant who, in truth, are probably just people with strong imaginations. How then do we tell when the experience that we're having is a genuine clairvoyant one? Well, in the beginning, this is really quite difficult. And what doesn't help is that often, initially, we might have a genuine clairvoyant vision. But halfway through experiencing that, we will lose the connection and our imagination will take over and kick in and replace the true vision with something of our own creation. And that's often when uh, we're reading for people that things go a little bit skew and a little bit offline and we lose our accuracy and our ability to see clearly and truly. And in the beginning, that ho often happens quite a lot. So we have to learn how to sustain the connection and uh, filter out any kind of interfering background psychic noise. Uh, and we also need to try and monitor ourselves so that we can recognize when we might have moved out of a genuine psychical spiritual clairvoyant experience and into the realms of our own imagination. Now what's tricky is that the recognition of a genuine vision is slightly different for each person. Some people feel it inside their body as a vibration, as a tremor, as a heat, as a tingling some people experience it more as an alteration of consciousness they feel expanded they feel a little bit high a little bit lightheaded a little bit daydreamy the same kind of sensation maybe that we have when we're just waking up in the morning or just falling to sleep at night and um, some people will get a kind of sharpening of focus where they will have a real intense um, awareness of something that is indisputable inside of themselves. So we have to learn to recognize our sign 
of a genuine experience. We have to be able to monitor ourselves so that we can spot that and also spot when that disappears so that we can pull ourselves back into alignment and attunement again. And we have to bear in mind that it is different for each person. So in the beginning, it's not necessarily always easy to determine. And it's only after several attempts and practices that we begin to recognize what is our tell of a genuine clairvoyant experience. Now, the reason why I think so many people are clairvoyant but don't really recognize it is because clairvoyance kind of comes in two different flavors. It is either subjective, internal, or objective, external. I happen to be a little bit of both, which some people are, but I would say that the majority of clairvoyants out there are subjective, that they see their clairvoyant visions in the mind's eye, internally with the eyes closed. I think a lot of people have these visions when they're waking up, when they're falling to sleep, when they're meditating, when they're daydreaming, and they don't realize that they are genuine clairvoyant experiences. I certainly didn't when I first started out on my path. And so they go through life just thinking that they have very vivid imagination and that strange things pop into their head when they're uh, slightly distracted, never realizing that this is a, a clairvoyant episode that they're experiencing. External clairvoyance comes from the same source. It's the same signal that we're picking up on psychically. It's just that with um, objective clairvoyance, with seeing outside, those particular people's brains have a capacity to transmit or transform that signal into an, a visual hallucination. And so they see the images as if they are around them in the real world. And that can be quite exciting. It can also sometimes be a little bit scary and quite off-putting. You know, if you're sat in the passenger seat of a car and you see a 16th century carriage sweep across the motorway, in the beginning, you think you're about to crash. It's only after several years of experience that you learn to ignore those kind of intrus obtrus intrusive visions and recognize that they're not happening in the real, real world. So um, if you are subjective in your clairvoyance, then that's great, that's fine. If you are objective in your clairvoyance, that's great, that's fine. But neither one gift is better or superior than the other. So what I want to do today is provide you with a little routine that you can practice to help awaken the brow center and develop your clairvoyant ability. I want to give you a few safety measures that I think are important before we begin. And then I'm going to take you through this little routine. So it's always important when we're doing these kind of exercises to make sure that we're not going to be disturbed, that um, the phone is off the hook, uh, that nobody's going to knock on the door, um, and also that the space that we're using is cleansed and clear, physically cleansed and clear, but also spiritually cleansed and clear. So you might want to smudge it with a little bit of white sage, you might want to burn a little bit of frankincense or sandalwood or pine essential oil, just to eliminate any negative background psychic static. Secondly, you want to protect yourself. Um, and once again, this just helps to filter out any negative energies or forces that might be attracted to your growing psychic light and either seek to um, project into your head misinformation or unpleasant images or visions um, or um, siphon off your energy or um, completely distract you away from what you're trying to achieve. You can do this in a variety of different ways. You can visualize a circle of light around you on the floor. You can see yourself in a bubble of light. You can call upon a protective presence like the Archangel Michael or the Archangel Safriel, the Archangel of Psychic Protection, or the Ascended Master Saint Germain. You can um, call upon um, protective talismans, you can work with protective crystals um, like amethyst or obsidian or tiger's eye. You might want to wear a, um, a pentacle or a star of David or a crucifix, depending upon your religion, which you see as a talisman that you can focus your protective 
uh, attention towards. And you also might just want to make sure that your vibration is high and that your energy is good. The simplest way of raising our vibration, which lifts our consciousness above those lower realms where those negative entities and energies reside and where those psychic frequencies that we might encounter when we're doing clairvoyant practice reside, which might be memories of trauma or traumatic events in the local area, because it's quite commonplace when people start to develop their clairvoyant experience that their first visions are negative and traumatic simply because their energy and their vibration is low. So when we raise our vibration, we lift ourselves above those lower frequencies and we prevent ourselves from having those immediate and initial negative visions, which can really put people off from pursuing the development of their power. Having a good laugh, having a little dance, thinking about people that you love, focusing on memories, that were joyful, all of these things are fantastic at instantaneously raising your vibration and your energy. You might also want to breathe in a little bit of prana, you might want to work with a nice clear quartz crystal, you might want to call upon your guide or your guardian angel to uh, feed you with energy because the energy high will help you sustain the connection to the psychic information. That's another reason why often in the beginning when we're developing clairvoyance, our ability to tune in goes in and out. We have these wonderful moments of great clarity and vision, and then we lose those or we lose the connection and the imagination takes over because our uh, vibration is not sustained at a high point, our frequency of energy. It's easy enough to hit that high, that high note, but sustaining it is tricky and sustaining it requires energy. So you should never do any psychical or spiritual exercises if your energy is low, if you're feeling ill, if you're emotionally upset because your energy levels will be all over the place, your frequency will be all over the place. You need to make sure that your energy levels are good and strong. An Ascended Master, who I spoke about in uh, episode one, uh, the Ascended Master Saint Germain, um, might also be able to help here. I'm just going to pop a few pictures of him to see. So these are AI portraits that I created this morning. If you're interested, if you want these, I'm very happy to send them to you. Just shoot me an email. Saint Germain, Ascended Master of the Seventh Ray, uh, Master Patron of the Violet Flame, the Flame of Spiritual Alchemy and Transmutation, which we can call upon to cleanse a space and also to protect ourselves is also the ascended master of visions of perception and clairvoyance people tend to focus more on him as the ascended master of magic and transmutation and alchemy and um, have lost sight ironically of the fact that he is the ascended master of visions and clairvoyance but indeed he is so he can be called upon to monitor over our practice and development in regards to seership and clairvoyance, um, he can be called upon to uh, boost our energy to help us sustain that um, connection with the uh, frequencies, with the psychic energies that we're trying to tune into. And we can also call upon him for cleansing and protection. So if you want to, you can call upon this particular master, the Ascended Master Saint Germain of the Seventh Ray, for all of the things that we need in preparation for our practice. So we've done all the safety measures, we've done the cleansing, we've done the raising of vibration, we've uh, bolstered our energy, we've protected ourselves when we're ready to go. This little routine then that I'm going to give you is one that the Ascended Master Saint Germain guided me to a long time ago. It uses acupressure points to awaken the brow centre, to open it, uh, to dilate it, so that we can tune into the psychic frequencies around us with greater ease and see with greater clarity and power. When we first do this little routine, we're going to tune into ourselves. So we're going to give ourselves a little reading. In the future, once you've had a good practice at just tuning into your own energy and the energy around you, you might want to try and tune into somebody else by holding an object that belongs to them or 
focusing on their name or having them with you in the room even. But in the beginning, we're just going to focus on ourselves. And I, I probably wouldn't advise you to do this every day, this routine, maybe three times a week. Um, you don't want to kind of over exercise the brow center and exhaust it or strain it. So three times a week is absolutely fine to give it the exercise that it needs, because as with all things, um, the chakras are muscles and we need to work with them and use them in order to develop them. So I'm just going to put a little bit of music underneath for our practice. This music was created by my partner, Andrew Helm. You can find some of his music on my website. Uh, he's created it to be license free so that you can download it and use it in your own um, therapy sessions and meditation groups and so on. Um, edwincourtney.co.uk is the website that you want to go to and just click on the free stuff button. You'll find lots of goodies there. Okay. So we are going to begin by using two acupressure points at the side of our head. Take your finger to your eyebrow, bring it down to where the eyebrow ends and in a kind of horizontal line with your eye here and here. And you just want to press lightly, nothing too intense. If it's painful, stop immediately and lessen the pressure. You need to feel it, but it certainly shouldn't hurt. And we're going to hold this for a count of 21, which is seven times seven. We're going to work with the number seven, which is connected to Saint Germain and sight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Now I'm going to guide you to our second acupressure point. Bring your fingers, two fingers, to the top of your head slide them down the back of your head. You'll find there's a bony knuckle. You can see it nice and easily on my bald head. Just take the fingers underneath there and then lean back into the fingers once again so you can feel the pressure. If it's painful, stop, you've gone too far. You just need to feel a gentle pressure of the fingers pushing under the bony ridge of the cranium. And we count one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Now, final thing before we close our eyes and see what we can see. I want you just to tap the brow. One, two, three four, five, six, seven times, and then just give it a gentle rub. This is just to help bring your focus and attention to your brow center. It just helps to center and focus your consciousness to this point, to this energy center in your body. Now I want you to close your eyes. Just take a few breaths. Make sure the body is nice and relaxed, no tension in the neck or shoulders. Focus on the sound of my voice and the sound of the music. I want you to stare into that blank blackness in your mind. Imagine, if you will, that you're in a cinema. The lights have gone down, but the screen hasn't lit up just yet. So you are staring out into the blackness in anticipation mind open to experience the movie that's about to play before you. But you're not looking for a cinematic experience, not in the beginning at least. You're just looking for vague impressions that might start to reach you through the darkness. Shapes that you can identify, forms that you can see. Maybe the odd colour that moves out of the darkness 
into your vision and focus. As these things start to appear, I want you to try and make a mental note of them so that later on you can try and interpret them and see what they might mean. Keep looking into the darkness, into the black blankness. And as the vague images begin to present themselves, make a mental note of what you see. And in the beginning, the images may be vague, just outlines, just shapes, shadows against the blackness. Don't ignore them, however vague they might be. Make a mental note and keep looking. Keep looking in the darkness and note what you see. Now take a few deep breaths, bring your attention back to the sound of my voice and let go of any images that you see in your mind's eye. Keeping your eyes closed, we're just going to take a few deep breaths to ground ourselves and center ourselves before we open our eyes. So take a nice long deep breath in and as you breathe out, Bring energy down through the legs and feet, down into the earth like the roots of a tree. From the base chakra, from the red center, the base of the spine, deep and wide into the earth to root and ground yourself. Let's do that again. Deep breath in. And out. Bring those roots down from the base chakra, through the legs, through the feet, down deep and wide into the earth to ground and one more time deep breath in and out bring those roots down into the earth deep and wide into the earth to ground now take another breath and this time we're going to feed a little energy into the solar plexus and sacral center the yellow and orange centers in the body just to center ourselves back into our physical form so deep breath in and out, feeding energy into the solar plexus and sacral center, the orange and yellow centers in the body. Deep breath in again. And out, feeding the sacral and solar plexus centers with energy. And just one more time. And out. Just wiggle your toes and fingers. Feel the chair beneath you and open your eyes. Now we did that quite quickly and when you do your own practice you might want to do it much slower, give yourself more time to focus on the visions in your mind's eye. Now you would scribble down the things that you can remember seeing and then I would advise that you go to Google and type in spiritual meaning of angle poise lamp, spiritual meaning of the ace of clubs, spiritual meaning of tangerine and see if the interpretations of the things that you've seen in your mind's eye have any kind of relevance for you. Understanding what you've seen is an art form all of itself. Those of you who are clairsentient might already have received an understanding when you received the vision. Most of us don't develop clairsentience straight away. Some of us don't develop clairsentience at all. And we have to rely upon a, a dictionary in order to interpret the symbols. One that we devise inside our own brains in time, but in the beginning, one that we lean into it on the internet through a Google search or in books. If you're going to use a symbol dictionary in books, I'd suggest Signposts by Denise Lin, um, 
Spirit Walking by Poppy Palin. I think there's a dictionary in that book. And uh, also Sasha Fenton's tea leaf reading books. Um, I use those at the beginning. Any symbols that we might see in tea leaves are equally as applicable for images that we might see inside our own head or elsewhere in clouds or in dishes of sand. So any books that you have that have symbolic interpretations and use those, maybe not so much dream dictionaries, they tend to be a bit weird in my experience. So this is a little daily routine, a daily practice for developing clairvoyance, for opening the brow center that you can do, like I say, just three times a week. In time, you will probably need to dispense with the acupressure. You won't need it to open the brow center. You'll just bring your attention to the brow center and you will feel it or see it pop open and the visions will start to come and you will be able to then focus your attention on what you're wanting to see about a, a person, a place, maybe using an object to help connect you to them, maybe just using the name of the person or maybe using a, an image of the person to strengthen your connection and your focus. I would always encourage you to remember those list of do's and don'ts, the importance of raising the vibration, the importance of having good energy, the importance of cleansing the space and protecting the space and the self. Um, and if you feel in any way, shape or form uncomfortable about doing those things on your own, then do lean into those presences that I've mentioned or those crystals that I've mentioned But Saint Germain, um, he's perfect for the job really. I hope you've enjoyed this little talk on clairvoyance. Uh, next time, we're going to be looking at the throat chakra and developing clairaudience. If you've enjoyed um, High Spirits with Edwin Courtney, then please do click and subscribe below. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram, and you can find um, all about what I'm up to on my website, edwincourtney.co.uk, where there is also a load of fantastic free stuff too. Thank you for joining me today. Stay safe and well, and I will see you all again soon.